For those of you who are here specifically to find out how to create round robins in contact, there's a timestamp below and in the video description. But for the rest of us, a nice cup of coffee. Some of you have noticed a brief absence. I actually managed to get away on holiday and I was a good boy. I didn't take my vlogging camera with me, nor my little portable edit suite, nor my little portable keyboard. I had five days off school, if you will, uh, up in the Highlands, which was absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend anyone planning. A holiday. Also, you'll probably notice over the next few vlogs there won't be any bee. Nothing has happened, to, well something has happened to her, but it's uh, routine. We basically had her spayed. The idea was that these guys were going to shag and we we're going to have loads of puppies, but have you ever had a puppy? And a lot of you have noticed in the last video above about this big event that's happening, it is in fact happening on Wednesday, not the Thursday. I generally thought it was happening on the Thursday until I was corrected by my fabulous EA Charlotte. Anyway, Back down to business. I do feel I'm getting a bit rusty. I haven't sampled anything for a while. I haven't made anything for Piano Book. So I thought I'd um, try and advance my contact learning. I've got some really ambitious piano projects coming up and I think they're gonna require some round robins. Also, you know, I have to say, I think that we need some faster and louder pianos and these will definitely require round robins. For those of you who don't know what round robins are, they're basically, you record the same thing several times so you don't get that machine gunning effect. Say for example, Paul Hart castles no, 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 19 and I think it's a way of uh, immediately really uh, creating very kind of professional realistic sounding samples of your own anyway so I'm a bit daunted by this but I wanted to find an instrument that wasn't a piano because I don't have time to sample and edit a piano just a, an instrument with a, a short decay and a small range so I could learn how to do contact round robins so I found this little thing So this company called Brand New Noise, this, I've actually bought it from them, I'm not sponsored or anything like that. And it's a gentleman called Richard Upchurch who are making these delightful devices. I bought, my wife is a, uh, an indie artist and uh, she's doing an album at the moment and I bought her Glockenspiel and their little papery uh, music box thing. Absolutely delightful. So what does an electric kalimba have to do with piano book? Well, this is all about sampling the stuff that is around you. And this isn't just an electric kalimba. It's actually a sampler. So I want to capture the sound of the internal speaker and the direct line out simultaneously. So I've set up a Coles mic, and then because this is a kind of a mini headphone style jack, so I've got that going into a headphone adapter, into a headphone extender, and I'm just putting it halfway into the hole. When you put it all the way in, it, it kills the speaker. So basically halfway in, I get both the speaker live and also the signal line out. And there are some fascinating artifacts that I find really interesting. But this is my opportunity to experiment and investigate and learn about how to create round robins, unscripted round robins within contact. So let's get sampling. So in this first setting, we have a kind of loop mode, which is fairly cool. Then this is one shot mode. I'm going to take three round robins of each tine, then for some of the deeper notes I'm going to pitch them down just with a single round robin. So we'll see how that turns out later. Do you remember this? Twenty-nine bagpipes tuning up. If you recall, 
in the last episode of Piano Book, I suggested we did another competition so I could get this right and better and more organized this time. And I left it with you guys to work out what you wanted the first prize to be. So the challenge is the same as the last competition, the Rusty Gate one. Basically, take an awful sound and convert it into something truly wonderful or challenging or musical at least. The results are in and it seems the way that we're going is Otto Bam, a very fine choice indeed. And of course, the top three entries will also receive a free copy of what we're announcing on Wednesday in London. Details down below. So one of the comments last time is that you're a busy bunch and uh, people didn't get enough time to submit their entries. So gonna give it a full month. So just so it's easy to remember the last day of September, let's say midnight here, I'll give myself a week to do another piano book where I whittle it down to a short list. You guys vote on it, let's say on the 7th of October through to the 13th. So unlucky for some, 13th of October is when I'm gonna need votes in and I'll be announcing the winner thereafter. Now, the whole point of Piano Book is, is sharing. And it's not just sharing of sounds, but sharing of ideas. So I'd love entries to have some form of tutorial about how you went about taking these bagpipes and converting them into the sonic masterpieces I anticipate you sending. And if you don't mind, I'll only be able to check them out on either contact I have the latest versions and all the versions running back or logics EXS 24 I don't have any other samples if it's a really simple sample um, give it to us on a WAV and tell us where to put it on the keyboard hopefully this is going to work better this time what I need from you is an email direct Christian at pianobook.co.uk and then in the subject this is really important I need the prefix Otto OTO followed by your name that'll be really helpful then in the body of the email, could you link me to the file? Dropbox is by far the best as we transfers time out, but I will try to get to them as quickly as I can, particularly if you use that prefix. If you've made a film for me to share, then include that either in that Dropbox or WeTransfer link or a second one, or indeed a YouTube link if you've placed it on your channel and you'd like me to link to that and hopefully have a winner announced within the middle of of October and hopefully will coincide with the release of the thing that we're announcing this Wednesday, which will be the first top three prizes. And of course, the Otto Bam will go to who we deem to be the winner. So best of luck and I really look forward to hearing all of these bagpipes. So one last thing before we check out the Electro Kalimba, and that is to showcase one of the piano submissions. And this week, we have a belter. I purchased this piano about four years ago after decades of practicing on a Yamaha U3 upright, which is a great piano for an NYC apartment because of the Una Corda pedal. I wanted to own a 7.5 foot instrument and also have it with a disc clavier system built in. Lucky so-and-so. Used DC7s are rare and I saw one for sale on eBay. I noticed that it was for sale at a shop not far from NYC and that a classmate from high school was the manager there. So I went out and played it, loved it and purchased it. I sampled this piano at PP and MP levels using the Earthworks piano mic system with the lid closed. And tell me, Pete, did you use the Disclavia system to sample a piano? I have an interesting theory about this. So I'm gonna take the Pepsi challenge and come to my own conclusions. Uh, I feel pianos that are played by humans sample better than when you use the Disclavia system. So I'd love to know uh, what way you approached it. But also I have to congratulate you on this really wonderful demo. These demos that are being sent in, we need more for more instruments and really kind of big composers are listening to these demos in order to pick which pianos they download. So I do urge you, if you fancy having a noodle on one of these pianos, do submit via the instructions below. But Pete, this piece is really fantastic and is one of the many pieces that has inspired me to have a little think about the musical content of Piano Book and maybe what we could do with that. More news soon. So let's return to this kalimba and see how easy or difficult it is to create round robins in contact. It's pretty tasty in EXS, so I have approached this with a degree of nervousness. So I quickly noise reduced the samples through Isotope. The mic was noisy because I left the aircon on, but the line had just a small amount of ground hum, which you can see here. 
I then pulled them into logic and normalized them so their waveforms are nice and big. I grouped both signals and picked the one with the more direct signal to be master for trimmage. Titling is always a chore until later when your older self wants to travel back in time to give his padwan a big smooch on the face. I then started to erroneously place all the regions on the heads of bars until I realized I only needed to do that with one pair of regions and then by lassoing all and dragging them back by the same amount as that first region by a quarter note 120 BPM I was creating a sample pre-roll of, by my calculations, 24,000 samples. Right, into contact we go, double click for a fresh new instrument, then title your first group, which is going to be the first round robin of the first signal, then, and this is just about all you have to do really, go to the group starts drop down and select cycle round robin, there's lots of other fun stuff in there too, then duplicate groups, and I'm going to need two times three plus two non-round robin groups, then retitle, Then all that's left to do is assign which position the group sits in the round robin chain here. And because your saintly former self has titled everything, this will be easy to organize. Then it's simply a case of dragging all of your samples in group by group, which again is easy to do because of your meticulous titling. And once that's done, you can organize region start points and root notes and all that stuff as you usually would. Hey, presto, just goes to show that these things aren't always as scary as they seem. Done a bit of tuning, separated them off into their different mic and lines and saved as a multi with them playing both simultaneously and pan slightly. So if we just uh, select this group, round robin number three, and maybe we'll just look at this sample here, we'll see round robin one round robin two and then finally it'll play this sample round robin three okay and let's hear it with the line and mic together has a kind of Tom York uh, flavour to it that's kind of interesting. I think I'd probably want to study this instrument a bit more and and see where the sweet spots are. I, I, I suspect doing it a bit quieter may be interesting, mixing it with the actual original, because it is a sampler, so actually recording the kalimba, layering those tines with the sampled may be interesting. Uh, so I will go back and I will get something a bit more interesting. However, I've done just a very simple thing here. I do like the, this is just with a slow ADSR. Now let's just add on some splosh. Okay, and then my fave new thing at the moment, very large black hole. Some really interesting qualities there and uh, well done to this gentleman, Richard Upchurch, for just creating something so completely insane. You have to admire him. So this kalimba experiment, I'm not going to make a page for it on Piano Book. It's just linked directly in the uh, video description down below, along with the bagpipes. And if you want a kalimba that isn't, well, a bit rubbish, David DeRose has submitted one in Piano Book, linked below, and you can hear it in this marvellous music that's playing at the moment with a piece written by another David, David Gomez. And again, thank you for these submissions as well as the sample submissions. So you can pick up that kalimba, that piano, and many polished and unpolished gems on pianobook.co.uk. Please keep submitting demos, please keep submitting pianos, and anything that's around you that you found at a junk shop that you care to share with us. And if you can only get 50 percent of the way there I'm sure the piano book community would be more than happy to help and offer their advice. For me the very heart of music is all about us passing on knowledge, about investigation, instruction, inspiration, 
and influence. And that's why, for me, Piano Book is such a moving enterprise to be involved with, because that is the very heart of what music is. Passing on what has been passed down the generations, passing on your experiments, your experience, and your adventures in this lark of making music and making sounds for music. Do subscribe if you haven't yet already, be foolish not to. Check out the links below for the big event on Wednesday. If you want to be notified the next time I put up a video, ding that bell. I'm going to be putting one up every day before Wednesday. And one of those for that amazing Yamaha, for that amazing kalimba, and for that chap who made the electric kalimba sampling machine. See you next time.